Hey there, Nick Jutakis here. In this video, we're going to go over how to connect to a service running on your Docker host from a container. And spoiler alert, we're going to be taking advantage of host.docker.internal here, which will work out of the box if you're using Docker Desktop. But we're also going to go over solutions in this video that will work on a production system where you might not be using Docker Desktop, but you still want to use host.docker.internal. We're also going to go over solutions that will work if you're using a very, 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 very old version of Docker that doesn't support some of the modern features that Docker evolved into creating over the years. So right now, this blog post is hosted on localhost. By the time that you watch this video, it's going to be public on my site. I'll leave a link to that one in the description here. And we're going to be going going over some commands, demoing things out and trying things out. But let's go over a couple of different use cases and then explain the solutions and how it's going to work. So a couple of years ago, back in 2017 and 18, I've wrote some Docker tips here that do things like, you know, how to connect to a database running on your Docker host, which is a very similar concept. And, you know, another post as well around just getting your Docker host IP address from in a container. And, uh, you know, since then, quite a few new features have been available from Docker to make this process a little bit easier. So I figured now would be a great time just to make a modern uh, updated version of this concept here. So yeah, there's basically uh, multiple use cases where this could occur, but I think two of them are pretty common, right? One of them is maybe you're transitioning into using Docker and you're not quite ready to move your database into Docker yet. So you want to connect to a locally running version of maybe Postgres or MySQL or some other database that you might just have running directly on your dev box outside of Docker, right? So your application there is running in a container, but your database is not. Uh, another use case here is maybe you have a couple of different servers that you're also in the process of Dockerizing and maybe two of them are inside of Docker, but that third service that you have, maybe you know, it's a little bit tricky to get Dockerized, so you haven't done it yet. Maybe you're just starting to do that, but you still need to develop new features on the app. So in this case, you know, two of your apps can be running inside of Docker, whereas the third one is not. But maybe all three of these need to be able to work together to create whatever end product that you're producing here. Of course, there's more use cases here, but I think that's the two main ones, at least at least what I've seen in the past here. So yeah, let's go over some solutions here where, you know, we're going to focus on what happens if you have a modern version of Docker, which is basically in this context, anything after uh, December 2020. So, I mean, we're already four plus years past that or give or take almost four years. So you probably have this version. And then we're going to go over the ancient version of Docker solution after that here. And by the way, it is worth pointing out here that all of the options below that we're going to go over will allow you to continue using Docker's bridge network. Basically, you know, if you were to use Docker Compose out of the box with no custom network configuration, you're using a bridge network. Uh, if you want to do some custom networking, that's all going to be fine. We're not going to have to resort to using uh, the host network uh, in this case to make things work. And we're going to see how all this comes together once we start looking at examples here. But yeah, we are going to take advantage of using host.docker.internal. This is a special DNS DNS name available to your container, and that resolves back down to your Docker host local bridge network gateway IP address. And uh, a lot of loaded terms here around networking and, you know, DNS, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, we are going to cover this in more detail in a second here. But really the takeaway here is you can connect directly to host.docker.internal from your container, and then you would just access whatever port that you need. So for example, Postgres by default will run on port 5432. So in your application's configuration code, you can just connect to host.docker.internal colon 5432, and that would be your Postgres host name, and your application would be able to connect to that. And yeah, if you're using Docker Desktop, this just works out of the box. There's literally nothing that you have to do here. And this feature is not new at all. Um, I looked at a couple of different sources. I couldn't quite find it in Docker's um, explicit change or, or log or release notes there. But yeah, Docker Engine 1803, I mean, we're talking March 2018. That's a long, <laughs> long time ago. So chances are, hopefully, you're available to at least use that there if you're using Docker Desktop. But let's say, you know, maybe you're using native Linux in production, not using Docker Desktop. There is a feature that has been available since December 2020. So if you're using Docker Engine 20.10 or above. Again, we're almost four years into this. Chances are this is available. You can use this thing called host gateway, which is a special value that you can actually combine with using this add host command, which we're going to, or flag, I should say, that we're going to cover in a second here. But yeah, this is basically a shortcut just to be able to get your uh, Docker Bridges network gateway IP address here. So the idea there is you can just, you know, map this host name back to this value here, which is a special value that's going to give you the correct IP address. But yeah, how does that actually work in practice? Well, let's say that you're not using Docker Compose, maybe you're just running a Docker container command, which by the way, we're going to get to very, very shortly here. You can just add this uh, flag here for add host, and then you can say host at docker.internal, and then you can just use host gateway like this, and that's going to evaluate to the IP address at runtime from Docker. You don't need to think about it or configure or even know what that IP address is. It will just work. And then, uh, you know, this is kind of nice because this kind of gives you parity between, you know, native Linux in production, or maybe you're using native Linux without Docker Desktop, but you still want to configure this for folks who are using Docker Desktop or not. So having that consistency is real nice. But 
you know, chances are, at least in my opinion, right, if you're developing some web application, you might have your stuff in Docker Compose. So in Docker Compose, you can do the very same thing here as this, but in Docker Compose, you would just add this extra host property to your application here, and then you can just pop in that host.docker internal host gateway, which does the same thing as above. And by the way, there's no code samples here for that specifically. I think, in my opinion, that's kind of clear, but in case it's not, let's just go real quick to one of my example applications here. I'll link to this one as well as in the description, it's not important. But you know, in this case here, and I've done quite a few videos about all sorts of things that you're gonna see in this file here. But yeah, this application happens to use Postgres right through a container. But let's just say for argument's sake, you know, Postgres is not running in the container, but my application container does need to use that. And uh, you know, I have this web service here, and as well as the worker, let's say both of them need to connect. You know, I've abstracted that out using uh, some YAML features, aliases, and anchors here. But long story short, where this is going here is, you know, I would just add that extra host property here. So like extra hosts, um, and then from here, that's a list. So, uh, you know, in the blog post, I put it as just a one-liner, but you know, you can also make that multi-line if you'd like, but I'm just gonna copy paste that here, you know, just like this. So actually let's just take it out as how it is from the blog post. But yeah, that's literally what you do. And the idea is, you know, you wanna put this at the applications container, not your, you know, database container. In this case, there is no database container, but yeah, this is what will allow the app to connect to uh, host at Docker internal, and then you're good to go. So that's all you would need to do there if you wanted to do that. So let's go back to the post here and uh, actually materialize all the stuff here because it's like, oh, uh, like gateway IP addresses and bridge networks, like what is all of that? So let's go and uh, play with this stuff to see how all the stuff works here. And that's basically, you know, little things are abstract, blah, blah, blah. Let's try actually running this here. So here, let's copy paste this command here. I'm gonna drop that into my terminal over here and go back to where I was before so we have more terminal room. Uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna let this run and we'll explain this as it runs in a bit here. But let's just see it work uh, first. So here it goes, blah, 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 doing its thing. And you can see it's pinging host at Docker internal and, it done, and it's done. But yeah, let's go back up here just to unwind this command a little bit here. So doing a Docker container run, pretty sure hopefully, or if you've used Docker before, you're probably familiar with this. We're running the container. We do dash dash RM because we want the container to go away once the container stops. Um, let's ignore the add host now because, you know, uh, for things. But yeah, I'm just running Debian stable slim here, which is uh, an official Docker image available. And then we're just running some shell command inside of that container here. And all we're doing is we're doing an app get update and we're installing IP utils ping just because uh, the Debian slim image doesn't have the ping tool available. And I wanted to use that as a demo. And then we just call ping here where we ping three times host.docker.internal. That's it. Very, very little of this command is actually specific to what we need to do to uh, achieve our end goal here. I mean, really, it's just this add host flag here where we just do a host attacker internal, host gateway, and then things work here. Everything else is like just getting ping installed, you know, picking whatever image that we want. Of course, this could be something else, right? I just wanted to do something for the sake of the video here. Uh, but yeah, that's how all of that would work. And, you know, right now on my machine, I'm currently not running Docker Desktop. So this is more, um, I guess, specific to how you might be running Docker in production. So let's just say what happens like when we remove that add host flag and we try to rerun the same commands here. So we can do this and now things are gonna continue doing what it needed to do before. You know, app get update and it's stolen ping and now it's gonna try to ping, but it's like, whoops, ping, host at Docker internal name or service not known. And that makes sense because host at Docker internal is just not available inside this container for us to even do anything like that. So if we go back down to here, here, we can see uh, just the output of that in text form. Of course, we just saw that in the terminal when I was running here. And uh, yeah, it kind of explains if you're not using Docker desktop, then you would see that situation that we just saw before with that error. But by the way, you know, if we go back to up here, because this is the same output that we saw in the terminal, that 172.17.01 IP address, you know, that's uh, actually what's associated with running the output of IPA, or depending on what operating system you use, maybe an if config, it's basically assigned to your um, Docker Zero network interface. So if I go back to my terminal here and I run an IPA, we can see somewhere in this list here, there's Docker Zero. We can see this uh, same address here, which is 172.17.0.1. Uh, so we have all that set up here. And uh, yeah, that's the bridge networks gateway IP address. And that is what uh, host.docker.internal is going to map down to. Now, with all of that said, you know, if we didn't do this add host in this command here, or this flag here, we could have uh, gotten things to work if we just directly assigned or directly pinged that IP address. Meaning like if you just wanted to connect to that IP address, it would have worked as well. So if we do that 172.17.0.1, and you can see here, you know, that add host uh, flag is not there anymore. So if I run this, this should still ping things uh, successfully here because there's no DNS lookup. There's no host name that needs to exist for this to work. So things still work if you want to access the IP address directly there. But uh, 
yeah, I don't know, that's a little bit clunky, right? Because using DNS is quite nice here just to avoid needing to remember that IP address. And really depending on how your network is set up, that IP address may actually be different. So the DNS allows us to not have to really worry about that IP address. Docker will resolve it using that uh, host gateway and then we're good to go here. And you can actually dive a little bit deeper into this too. If you do Docker network inspect bridge, you can take a look at some of the values that we see here. So let me pop that in here and we can take a look. So if you look at the output of inspecting the bridge network, at least the default bridge network, network with Docker. And by the way, you know, if you're just using Docker Compose and you do a Docker Compose up, it is going to create a different bridge network, uh, it's, but it's going to be based on the same thing. It'll just be named something different for that specific project. So you can isolate things however you see fit here. Uh, the really important takeaway here is near the top third or middle, whatever. Um, we can see in the config here that gateway IP address is 127.17.0.1. So that's how all that stuff ties together there. And yeah, now um, that kind of leads us into, well, Let's say that you're using a really old version of Docker, maybe something um, that doesn't have either of these features available, or maybe it is uh, sometime in between 2018 and December 2020. Yeah, we have other opportunities that we can do here. So using Go's templating language, we can actually run that same exact bridge network command that we did before a second ago. And then, um, hold on, let me go back to here and recopy this one just in case. Um, yeah, so paste it in here. We can actually see the IP address directly here. Uh, this is literally the same command we ran before, but we're just filtering out uh, the specific value that we want. This could be really nice if you're putting this into some type of script where you need to like replace something with something else. You can just get that output without needing to manually write some shell scripts or you know use set or some other tools to, to parse that one out here. And again, too, you can always just connect straight to the IP address, but again, it's not guaranteed to be that on every system. But again, if you're in a controlled environment where you know the system's IP address is not going to change, then you can just uh, take the air quotes easy route there and just do that. Um, but yeah, I would definitely, or at least consider using the solution here just because you can get it dynamically and things are going to work pretty nicely. But alternatively, uh, you could always just run IPA or if config, whatever, you know, your operating system supports there, find the Docker zero network uh, interface that we saw before, and then like parse this out using whatever command line tools that you'd like here. In fact, this post from 2018, uh, whichever one it was here, kind of goes over details of how to do that with some uh, fun commands here. But yeah, uh, that's no longer necessary in my opinion there. But that's going to do it for this video. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you've ever used this before. Maybe some use cases that weren't covered here. That's kind of interesting. It's always good to hear about that stuff. But with that said, if you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.